The Little Rascals, originally known as Our Gang first debuted in 1922, chronicling a group of ragtag neighborhood kiddos and their adventures. These kids were so distinct in personality and features that they all earned their own nicknames, from Spanky to Alfalfa. And watching these kids just be kids on screen was pretty revolutionary. It was an idealized version of youth, from putting on grand shows Hiya, pal. to inventing sweet rides. We watched and we wished that we could join in on the fun. And though the cast went through some replacements over the years, it's safe to say that this group of children started something, something big. Call me Chubsy Ubsy. And little. If you have a name, go eat me, 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 me. A Little Rascals franchise, as their appeal continues to this day. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, and today we're checking out the original Little Rascals cast and what they did after being part of something legendary. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can always be a part of our gang. Billy Buckwheat Thomas Buckwheat was originally a background member of the gang, a girl dressed as the stereotypical African-American pickaninny. But slowly, the girl character morphed into a boy. The role was originally portrayed by Matthew Stymie Beard's younger sister, Carlina, before it switched to male and Billy Buckwheat Thomas took over. He began acting in the Our Gang shorts in 1930, and it was the only acting he ever did. Thomas later enlisted in the U.S. Army at the age of 20. And after his time serving, he decided that acting just wasn't of interest to him. He once said in a 1980 interview, quote, After the army, I wasn't really interested in the hassle of performing. Even the big stars had to chase around and audition. It seemed like a rat race to me with no security. However, Billy still enjoyed movie magic as a whole and had a career as a film lab technician with the Technicolor Corporation. He even continued his education to film editing and cutting. Sadly, Billy died of a heart attack in his Los Angeles apartment in October 1980 at the age of 49. In 1990, ABC's 2020 aired a segment featuring a man named Bill English, a grocery bagger in Arizona who claimed to be the adult buckwheat. This prompted public objections from George Spanky McFarland, who informed the media that Buckwheat had been dead for 10 years. But despite this refute, English, who then died four years later, refused to take back his claim, maintaining that he had originated the role of Buckwheat, with other actors taking over after his departure. George Spanky McFarland. Ah, good old Spanky. Certainly one of the most recognized members of the entire franchise. Who could forget him as General Spanky? Well, if it isn't General Spanky. Hello, General. It doesn't get any cuter than that. When one mentions the Little Rascals, it's Spanky's adventures with pal Alfalfa that most often come to mind. George McFarlane joined the gang after Jackie Coogan's departure in late 1931. Before joining, McFarlane modeled children's clothing for a Dallas department store and was visible on several highway billboards, also completing print ads for Wonder Bread. George's nickname is said to have come from his mother, who urged him not to misbehave in Hal Roche's office, the creator of the show. See, McFarlane had a habit of grabbing things, and his mother would warn him, Spanky mustn't touch. Roche was the mastermind behind Laurel and Hardy, and Spanky's famous double and triple takes were taught to him by Stan Laurel, while many of his mannerisms and exasperated expressions were inspired by Oliver Hardy. It was a perfect storm of comedy. After leaving the show, McFarlane enlisted in the U.S. Air Force. He later worked various jobs, at one time an executive with Philco Ford, and from 55 to 1960, he created and hosted his own daily children's show, The Spanky Show, which aired on an Oklahoma CBS affiliate. Spanky entertained with games, craft making, skits, informational segments, and interviews, all in between reruns of The Little Rascals. McFarland was a passionate golfer, who in his later years could be seen on the Pro-Am circuit. Sadly, he died in June 1993 at the age of 64, but we'll never forget Spanky. Matthew Stymie Beard Stymie was one of the minority cast members in the gang. My name is Stymie. 
which for its time was incredibly inclusive and encouraging. He was always recognized by his trademark bowler hat and bald head. Beard was cast as a baby in many films before signing a five-year contract to play Stymie. His character was originally named Hercules until director Robert McGowan renamed him Stymie. Once again, Laurel and Hardy helped round out the character as the trademark hat was given to him by comedian Stan Laurel. Beard's very first appearance was as Hercules in Teacher's Pet in 1930, and many recall this short as one of the series' best. Matthew left the show at age 10. Matthew went through some hardships in his life, horribly becoming addicted to heroin, even committing small crimes to indulge his habit. Thankfully, with the help of rehab, he was able to turn his life around and even started acting again, like his three episodes of Sanford and Son in the early 70s, and a recurring role as Monty on Good Times. Then in 1978, he appeared in the Buddy Holly story, once again wearing his signature derby hat. Beard maintained his sobriety and often gave lectures on drug abuse awareness. He did this up until his passing in January 1981 at the age of 56. Matthew Stymie Beard was buried with his infamous Stymie hat. Billy Froggy Laughlin Froggy was a later addition to the show, joining in 1940 at age 8. He was known for wearing his thick glasses to correct his crossed eyes, and had a distinctive Popeye-esque voice. Does your voice always sound like that? No, sir, only when I talk. Billy was often bullied in his neighborhood, so his mother enrolled him in a drama class. This is where an MGM talent scout spotted his Popeye impersonation and cast him as Froggy. He worked in tandem with Alfalfa Switzer in his first three films, and then replaced the now too old Switzer as the comic lead of the group beginning in 1941. His younger brother Mickey Laughlin joined the gang briefly as well to try and fill Spanky's shoes with McFarlane's eight aged out departure. When our gang stopped production in 1944, Laughlin went straight into Johnny Doesn't Live Here Anymore. But this would be the end of his acting career. Sadly, at age 16, just two weeks after his parents gifted him a scooter, he was out delivering newspapers. When a speeding truck struck the boy and his friend who was driving the scooter, the friend only suffered minor injuries. But Billy Laughlin died at a nearby hospital on August 31st, 1948. At 16, he was the youngest little rascal death. Carl Alfalfa Switzer. Alfalfa, with his trademark cowlick and freckles, is possibly the most iconic rascal. His image appeared in every form of our gang merchandise, but unfortunately he never saw the happiness or money from using his likeness. On the set, Carl was often recalled as impatient and troublesome, leading the rest of the gang to mischief. When he got bored, he took the others to invade nearby sets, such as Tarzan, leading a charge into a love scene that was being filmed. After completing 61 shorts, his final one was the One Real Kitty Cure, completed when he was 12 years old, and he continued acting for a bit, including a small role in It's a Wonderful Life as Donna Reed's date at the high school dance. He guest starred on six episodes of The Roy Rogers Show, and his final acting endeavor was in 1958 in the Tony Curtis-led film The Defiant Ones. He was struggling to find good roles being so recognizable as Alfalfa. He left show business and became a dog breeder and hunting guide, but tragedy struck again when in 1959, he was fatally shot during a tussle over owed dues of a hunting dog. Carl was just 31 years old. Darla Hood. Darla was introduced to the gang with the very popular short, Our Gang Follies of 1936. Oh, Darla that adorable little girl who loved to sing. In that first short, she performed I'll Never Say Never Again Again. And the love relationship between she and Alfalfa was hinted at by her smiling gaze as Alfalfa nervously performed a number. Darla's mom introduced her to performing at a young age, and the whole family moved to New York to seek opportunities for young Darla. That was when Joe Rivkin, a casting director for Hal Roach Studios, cast her in the gang shorts. Later on, Rivkin again cast her in her final adult role in the Vincent Price-led horror flick called The Bat in 1959. In the late 70s, Darla was busy organizing a little rascal 
Michael's reunion when she underwent an appendectomy. Sadly, and in theme with most of the rascal's fate, Darla contracted hepatitis from the surgery and died of heart failure in June 1979 at the age of 47. Eugene Porky Lee. Porky reminds most viewers of a young Spanky. He's best friends with Buckwheat and joined the same time as Darla in 1935. But he had to leave the show in 1939 after a massive growth spurt, even outgrowing McFarlane when he was just 10 years old. And you're fired. Now take that stuff and go sit down somewhere. Okay, honey. He was replaced on the show by Robert Blake, aka Beretta. Eugene retired from show business after Our Gang and became an alternative school educator at Broomfield High School in Colorado. To escape his previous gang affiliation, he changed his name to Gordon Lee after his favorite Our Gang director, Gordon Douglas. Lee passed away in 2005 at the age of 71 after a battle with cancer. It's no wonder so many spinoffs and revivals happened throughout the years, including the 1994 feature film, The Little Rascals had such charm and style, and you truly liked these characters. Throw in some incredible gags and genius slapstick comedy, and it will probably forever be unmatched. So tell us, who is your favorite rascal? Is there a particular Our Gang short that you used to watch over and over? Let us know in the comments below. We read them all. And if you enjoyed revisiting some of the members of Our Gang with us, please give our short a thumbs up too. And subscribe to Do You Remember so you never miss a memory. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks so much for watching.